Well, good evening and welcome to the Fairview Church. My name is TJ. I'm the pastor here at the Fairview Church. Looks like we have a lot of new faces, at least to me. I've only been the pastor here since uh, March, like almost, well, February. In March, we had the pandemic set in, so not quite two years. So the last time we did this performance, I wasn't actually here. But a little bit about the performance, those of you that have come and that do appreciate it, the history of this, that this has been taking place back into the 70s, dating back to before we were even in the building. Our first one took place here in 1985 for our first Christmas in this building. But it predates back to the 70s when we were at the Woodland Park Church of God. And so I wanted you to know that this is something that has been going on for decades. Many of you sitting here are probably been a part of it in the past. And so we're glad that you've joined us tonight. I was just back with them praying and Miss Debbie said that this is going to be the best night of the two, so I'm glad that you're here to enjoy it. <laughs> and we just want to thank you for being here and your support. I know that all of the actors tonight have done a great job in getting ready. I got to enjoy it for the first time last night. And so a couple of action items of things is if you have a cell phone, I'm kind of like that fun board at the movie. Please silence it at this time so that you don't get that awkward phone call in the middle of a play. And once again, we want to thank you for joining us for this holiday season and for our Christmas performance. And if you don't have a church or maybe you used to come to this church and you haven't been back in a while, we would love to invite you to come back. Our services are Sunday mornings at 1030. We will also be having a Christmas Eve service. And so thank you for joining us once again. Thank you for coming. And let's open in a word of prayer and let's get this party started. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to stop in the middle of the season that celebrates you giving us your son. So God, we thank you for the precious gift of Jesus and the reason for this season. God, we thank you for drama like plays, like Dickinson wrote to bring back the gospel forefront into the season. That a revival, even in London during that time, may take place. And Father, as we sit here in a city called Seattle that desperately needs an infusion of your love, we ask that you would be with us tonight, that you would be with our actors, that you would bless their performance, and that if there's someone here that just needed to hear a little bit more about your love, that they would receive that tonight. So God, continue to be with us, be with all the lights, be with all the sound and the microphones, and help us in this endeavor. We thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Well, without further ado, thank you again for being here, and let's enjoy the show. To begin with, Marley was dead. You must understand this or nothing wonderful can come of the story I am about to relate. The record of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and by Scrooge himself. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. I don't mean to say that I know what's particularly dead about a doornail. I might have been inclined to consider a coffin nail the deadest piece of ironmongery in the trade. But the wisdom of our ancestors is in that simile, and I shall not disturb it. Allow me to repeat, old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead and had been dead for seven years. In life, Scrooge and Marley had been partners for I don't even know how many years. Scrooge never painted out the name of Marley from above the warehouse door. No one knew why, he just didn't. As always, it read, Scrooge and Marley. Scrooge was a tight-fisted, squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, 
clutching, covetous, old sinner. Of that you can be certain. The cold within him froze his old feature. It nipped his pointed nose, it shriveled his cheek, and it stiffened his gait. He carried his own low temperature about with him always and iced his office in both summer and winter. No one ever stopped with gladsome looks to greet Mr. Scrooge. No man or woman ever inquired of him the way to such and such a place. No child ever inquired of him what time o'clock it was. Nope. Being a harsh and sinful man, people would rather walk on the other side of the street than to greet this ice-cold creature, and that is the way Scrooge liked it. See for yourself, here he comes now. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. Christmas Eve, the weather is cold, bleak, biting, and foggy. Mr. Scrooge comes to ascertain whether his clerk, Robert Cratchit, is at work with diligence. Let's go see one for Mr. Scrooge. You can go sing if you want. I want to hit in the eye with a lump of coal. A lump of coal is worth half a pet, and that's better than nothing. Anyway, it's Christmas Eve. Even Mr. Scrooge has to be merry on Christmas. Are the herald angels sing glory to Get away from me! Get away from me, you beggars! I've nothing for you. A shilling, sir. Just, just a shilling, sir. A shilling for a Merry Christmas, sir. Please. Perhaps you'd like another song, sir. Take the with that. Get away from me! Or I'll call the police! Oh, I guess you're shilling, sir. Please, sir, please, just a shilling. I'll take a lump of coal, Mr. Scrooge. Not a farthing. I have other places to put my money. Now go! All right, sir. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas, old baggy. He's as tight as a grandmother's corset. Yes, he is. Don't you talk about my grandmother's corset like that, or I'll give you my fist. Away with ye! Merry Christmas. Bah! Humbug. Give him a shilling, eh? I'd like to give him six months in the workhouse, I would. That would be a Merry Christmas. And where are you going, Bob Cratchit? To add a few more lumps of coal, to warm up a bit, sir. Mr. Cratchit, come here. What is this? An overcoat, sir. And this? A waistcoat, sir. And this? A shirt, sir. <laughs> These are clothes provided for man to cover himself and to keep himself warm. Clothes may be used over and over again. Coal burns, and thus can only be used once. You want to let my coals alone if you wish to keep your situation. I'm a much older man than you, and I'm not complaining about the cold, am I? Now, 
Get back to work, Bob Cratchit. I'm not a millionaire. I suppose you want me to end up in the poorhouse. Oh, of course not, sir, no. Here it is, three o'clock in the afternoon, the middle of the day, and there are two candles burning. Two? What more could you want? Uh, nothing, sir, nothing. Why, Uncle Ebenezer! Uncle! A Merry Christmas! God save you! Bah! Humbug! Christmas? A humbug? Uncle, surely you don't mean that. I do. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come now, Uncle. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Bah! Humbug? Come now, Uncle. Don't be cross. What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas. Out upon your Merry Christmas. What is Christmas time to you but a time for, for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. <laughs> if I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Nephew, you keep Christmas in your way. Let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone then. Much good may it do you. Much good has it ever done you. There are many things that have not yielded financial profit, yet have resulted in good. Christmas being among them, it is a kind, forgiving, and charitable time. The only time I know of in the long calendar year, when men and women seem, by one consent, to open their hearts freely. And therefore, uncle, though it has never put a scrap of silver or gold in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good, and I say God bless it. Let me hear another sound out of you, Mr. Cratchit. You'll be keeping your Christmas by losing your position. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Come see us. Oh, I'll see you. I'll see you in... Why won't you come to dinner? Why ever did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. Bah! Is, Good afternoon. Is that the reason? But you never came and visited before I was married either. Good afternoon. Uncle, I want nothing from you. I ask nothing from you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. However, the invitation stands. A Merry Christmas to you. Bah. And a Happy New Year. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob Cratchit. A oh, Merry Christmas, sir, and God bless it. Scrooge and Marley's, I presume? Yes, you do. Do we have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Marley or Mr. Scrooge? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. Yeah. I'm sure his generosity is well represented in his surviving partner. Oh. <laughs> At this festive season, Mr. Scrooge, we are trying to make some small provision for the poor and destitute who are suffering so greatly. Many thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons, sir. And the union workhouses, are they still in operation? Sadly, they are. I wish I could say that they were not. Oh, I was afraid from what you said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. Uh, 
under the impression that they can scarcely provide any Christmas cheer, either of body or spirit, to the multitudes, a few of us have endeavored to raise a fund and buy them some meat and drink and means of warmth. What can we put you down for? Nothing. You wish to remain anonymous. I wish to be left alone. I do not make merry myself at Christmas. I don't believe in it. And I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help support the establishments that I've mentioned. They cost enough. Those who are badly off must go there. But, but sir, many cannot. They are full. And many would rather die than go there. If they would rather die, they should do so and decrease the surplus population. And besides, that is not my business. It is enough for a man to know his own business and not interfere in other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good day. But, sir, good day and good day. Is there anything else, sir? You'll be wanting the entire day off tomorrow, I suppose. If it's quite convenient, sir. Well, it's not convenient. <laughs> and it's not fair. And yet, if I were to dock you half a crown for it, you would consider yourself ill-used, wouldn't you? I, I don't know, sir. However, you don't consider me ill-used when I pay a full day's wage for no work. But sir, it's Christmas Day. It's only one day. Poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you've got to have the entire day. You will be back in the office all the earlier the next morning. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, then. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas. Bah! Humbug. After Scrooge had read all of his newspapers and beguiled the rest of the evening with his banker's book, he took his usual melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy manner. Then he turned for home to go to bed. Scrooge lived in quarters that had once belonged to his partner Marley. Now, do remember that Marley was dead. They were a dark and gloomy suite of rooms. Darkness is cheap, you know, and Scrooge liked that. The building was quite old and very dreary, for no one other than Scrooge lived in it. Here, we find Mr. Scrooge making his way home on this cold and foggy Christmas Eve. Now, it is a fact that there was nothing at all particular about the knocker on the door to this house, 
except that it was very large. But as Scrooge he chanced to look up at the knocker and find that the knocker was not a knocker, but Marley's face. Marley's face with a dismal light about it, like a bad lobster in a dark cellar. It was not an angry or ferocious face. It just looked at Scrooge like Marley used to look at Scrooge with ghostly spectacles turned up upon his ghostly forehead. Scrooge rubbed his eyes in disbelief. And when he looked at the knocker again, it was a knocker again. Scrooge was not an easy man to frighten. Nevertheless, he decided to check every room in the house. He checked every lock twice. Being satisfied there would be no further disturbance, he retired to his bedchamber. But there, startled at the appearance of his own shabby night jacket, he jousted with it. But finding it lifeless and void of any ghostly apparitions, he took off his ancient overcoat. And his threadbare suit. And donned the night jacket for what meager warmth it might provide. Now, seeing as Scrooge did not heat the house, he also donned a nightcap. This I think he did to keep his brain from freezing. These things accomplished, Scrooge bolted both locks upon the bedchamber door. This was not his custom. What do you want with me? Would 
you have of my reality beyond that of your own senses. I don't know. Why do you doubt your senses? Well, because uh, a little thing affects them. You, you may be an undigested bit of beef. A blot of mustard, crumb of cheese, a fragment of underdone potato. There's more of, of gravy than of grave about you, whatever you are. Please, <laughs> no! I'm in here. Why do you trouble me? Man of a worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? I do. I, I must. But what do you want of me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him walk abroad among his fellow men. And if that spirit does not go forth in life, it is condemned to do so in death. It is doomed to wander the world and wit what it cannot share, but might have shared, and turns to happiness. Jacob, you are better. Tell me why. These are the chains I forged in life. I made them link by link, by yard. I put them on of my own free will, and I wear them. Do they look strange? Don't you feel the weight and length of the strong chain you bear yourself? It was a Full and heavy and long as mine seven Christmas Eves ago. And you have labored on it since it is a ponderous chain. <laughs> have you nothing good to say? Comfort to me, Jacob. I have no comfort. None to give. That comes from other regions, Ebenezer Scrooge, and is conveyed to you by other ministers. A very little time is permitted to me. I cannot rest. I cannot stay in life. My spirit never walked beyond our counting house, never wandered beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hole. You were always a good man of business, Jacob. <laughs> business? Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Love, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. For you now, in the shape that you can see, I do not know, for I have sat invisible beside you many and many a day, trying to reach out to you, and now I am here to warn you that you have yet a chance 
and hope of escaping my fate. You were always a good friend to me, Jacob. I, I thank you. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and the hope you mentioned? It is. In that case, uh, I think I would rather not. Expect the first tonight when the bell tolls one. Take it. Couldn't I take it all at once and just have it over? Expect the second when the bell tolls two and the third when the last stroke of three has ceased to vibrate, expect to see me no more. Marley disappeared into the night. Scrooge again checked the bolts on his bedchamber door and confirmed that they still were locked. In the dark, dank room, he could no longer distinguish between the transparent window and the opaque walls of his bedchamber. Scrooge resolved to stay awake past the hour of one, but he was tired spent from the day, and that ghost had completely worn him out. Consequently, when he settled on his bed, he fell asleep on the instant. At the sounding of the one o'clock hour on the church steeple chime, Scrooge awakened with foreboding. He sensed that he was not alone. coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? Me. I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No. Your past. Oh. Uh, and what of my past? has brought you here. Your welfare. Oh, I'm much obliged, but I would think that an uninterrupted night's sleep might be more conducive to that end. Your reclamation, then. Come, take my hand. Come on, come on. Remember, remember. Do you know these windows, these walls, this floor? Come, see yourself as you were before. Good heavens. Uh, I do know this place. Uh, I was a boy here at Limber's school. Now these are only shadows of things that have been. They cannot see and they cannot hear us. Do you know this child? By himself and lonely, neglected and so sad. And his books are friendships that will never leave him. Come and see the friends that you have. Now let's see another Christmas, one where you were not alone. Let us see the sister who came to bring you home. Oh, Ebenezer, Father is so much kinder than he used to be, and home was like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one night when I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him if he might come home once more. He 
He said yes and sent me in a coach to get you, and you are never to be here again. Oh, do you really mean it, Fan? We can be a family again, and now we're to be together all the Christmas and have the merriest time in all the world. She died. Died a woman. Died of giving childbirth. Having given birth to one child, a boy, your nephew. Yeah. Fred. Now, let's see another child. Remember. Remember. Growing up with dreams and laughter and friendships. Oh, do you know this place? Hear that bell chime? Yes, sir, I did, sir. Mr. Marley, do you know what day it is? Uh, today. It's what? Christmas Eve, Mr. Marley. <laughs> Christmas Eve, Mr. Scrooge. And here it is seven on the hour, and me still working. Mrs. Fezziwig will have my hide. And you two scoundrels haven't said a word about the party. You'd think you cared more about this work than meeting my two fair daughters. <laughs> Look lively, boys. We need to turn this modest warehouse into the grandest of ballrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to party! Ah, uh, here they are, my two blossoms of spring in this cold winter. <laughs> and the image of their mother's beauty. Mr. Marley, the door, if you please. That'll be the music yes. set. Mr. Scrooge, I believe you know my daughter, Belle. And Mr. Marley, I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Flora. Oh. <laughs> Father, please, please, dismiss your fawning. We are quite capable of introducing ourselves. Of course, of course. Mr. Marley, it is quite the honor. My father speaks so highly of you and your friend, Mr. Scrooge. He says you're destined to own this company someday. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps. Oh, come, come now! Time for a dance! Come on, dance! No, no, uh, I 
should like to say a word or two to my clerk just now, if that's all. Well, my time grows short. It matters little to you, very little. Another idol has displaced me, that's all. If it can comfort you and cheer you in times to come, as I would have tried to do, then I have no cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you? A golden one? This is the way of the world. Nothing is so devastating as poverty, and nothing condemns poverty more than wealth. You fear the world too much. All your other hopes have merged into this one. I've seen all your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion, greed, engrosses you. Have I not? What then? Even if I have grown that much wiser in the world, I haven't changed towards you, have I? Our contract is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so until, in good season, we could improve our worldly fortune by our patient industry. You are changed. When it was made, you are another man. Have I ever sought release? In words? No, never. In what then? In a changed nature. If this quest for wealth had never come between us, tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now? I wish that it From this place, I cannot bear it. hour on the church steeple time, Scrooge awakened suddenly and sat bolt upright in bed. He remembered the words of Marley and wondered, from what direction would the second spirit appear? 
At this moment, nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished him much, but being prepared for almost anything, he was not at all prepared for nothing. And consequently, when no spirit appeared, he was taken with a violent fit of trembling. Five minutes. Ten minutes. A quarter hour. Where was the spirit? <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> I am the ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> Have you ever seen the like of me before? <laughs> never. Oh, have you never walked forth with any of the other members of my family? <laughs> I, I don't believe I have. Uh, I, I'm afraid I have not. Have you many siblings, Spirit? Oh, 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 oh. More than 1,800. <laughs> A tremendous family to provide for. Huh? And are you here to show me more of my past misdeeds? No. <laughs> I'm here to show you your present ones. <laughs> Come, take my robe. <laughs> There's quite a bit of, of commerce. I hadn't realized that. Yes, you would notice there is quite a bit of commerce, but there's more. Why, there's fellowship and goodwill. Uh, yes, that too, I suppose. I, I say, is there a particular flavor in what you sprinkle from your torch? Oh, yes, <laughs> there is. It's my own. <laughs> and would it? apply to any kind of uh, fellowship upon this day? Well, to any kindly given, but to a poor one most. Why to a poor one most? Because it needs it most. Where's Martha? Oh, she's not coming. 
Not coming? Not coming upon Christmas Day? Oh. Here I am, Father. Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on, Tim. Let's go to the wash house and see the pudding. You can hear it singing in the copper. Come on. So how did Tiny Tim behave? As good as gold. And better. Although he sits by himself so much. He thinks the strangest things you've ever heard. He hopes that the people in the church would see him and that he's a cripple. And that upon Christmas Day they might think who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. He grows more hardy every day. Oh, here's the goose. Oh, and the table's not even ready yet. Girls, 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 help me. Bring out the potatoes. I'll be right back. Oh, I can hardly wait. Come on, everyone. Let's sit down to eat. <sighs> For this bounteous feast, we thank thee, O Lord. We thank thee, O Lord, on this Christmas day. For this joyous time, we thank thee, O Lord, we thank thee, O Lord, on this Christmas day. For my children, Lord, I pray, from my oldest girl to my tiny Tim, on this Christmas day. Lord, even in our suffering, and when times are hard, Lord, you bless us still, on this Christmas day. For this joyous feast, we thank thee, O Lord, we thank thee, O Lord, on this Christmas day. For this joyous time, we thank thee, O Lord, we thank thee, O Lord, on this Christmas day. May God bless us and keep us. Amen. Amen. To Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge, the founder of our feast. Oh, Robert Cratchit. Mr. Scrooge, the founder of this feast? Your boss, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, I wish I had him here right now, because I would give him a piece of my mind to feast on. And you know what? He better have a really good appetite for it. My dear, the children. Christmas Day. Well, yeah, Christmas Day of all the days. You want me to toast to such a stingy and odious, miserly, horrible, overworking you boss man as I Mr. Scrooge? And you know, you know he does that. You know he is more than anyone. My dear, Christmas Day. I will toast to him because I love you and because of the day, but not because of him. Is that your cup? I'm sorry, I'll take mine. <sighs> Children, to Mr. Scrooge, may he have a long life and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That was really hard. Merry Christmas, and God bless us all. God, God bless, bless us. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner, and a crutch an owner carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. Oh, no, no, kind spirit, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race will find the child here. But so what? If he should like to die, he should do it, and thereby decrease the surplus population. You 
use my words against me. Would that you would be careful before you use such words again. Until you know what and where this surplus is. Would you be the one who decides who lives, who dies? Why, it might be in the sight of heaven that you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. Come, take my robe once more. so pleasant as he might be. However, his offenses carry their own punishment, and I have nothing to say against him. He is very rich, Fred. You always tell us so. Perhaps, but what of it? His wealth is of no use to him. He doesn't do any good with it. He doesn't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't the satisfaction of thinking that he's ever going to benefit us with it. I have no patience with him. Mm -hmm. Nor have I. Oh, I have. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill will? He does. Always. Here. He takes it into his head to dislike us, and he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? He doesn't lose much of a dinner. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I think he misses a fine dinner indeed. And such company of quality. Yes. Mm, and talent. Definitely. Yeah. And yes, 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 yes. Abigail? How about a game? Yes, my dear, a game! Yes, yes. All right, all right. But you must all play. Come, Scrooge, let's be off. Spirit, they're, they're playing a game. Why was I going to He's going to snore. What are you going to do? Some kind of animal. Is, is it an animal, Fred? Yes. Oh, a live animal. A dog. Yes. A dog. Is it, is it friendly? <laughs> Sorry, no. Huh. A bear. So bear. it's unfriendly. Mm -hmm. Is it a leopard with large, dark black Ooh. spots? Oh, does it growl? Sometimes. Is he in a show? A show? Uh, no, sorry. A badger. No, it's not a show. Is it, is it an animal? Oh, is it an animal that has been killed for the market? Sorry, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Can he be seen here in town? In London? Oh. Hmm. So he's disagreeable, he growls, and he roves around London? And, and sometimes he talks. I know. Oh, I know. You, oh, you it's your Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Oh, my God. Oh, that was a good one. Great. Come, Spirit. Great. Yes. Let's go. Oh, no, they're playing the game. Christmas. I would like to stay. Some Christmas presents. Oh, I would love some. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. Scrooge. He has given us plenty of merriment, I'm sure, and it would be ungrateful not to drink to his health. Lift your glass of Christmas punch and say, to Uncle Scrooge. To Uncle Scrooge. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man, wherever he may be. You wouldn't take it from me, but may he have it nonetheless. I believe the pudding is ready in the dining hall. Ooh, Shall we, my really? dear? Yes. All right. Yes. Deck the halls with bows of holly. Ba la ba la ba la 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 la. Tis the season to be gone. May God protect you, Ebenezer. I've prayed all these years for God to be revealed to you and for you to have a 
generous heart. I'll continue praying. Spirit, the night is not yet spent, yet you clearly look more tired, uh, and if possible, older. That I am. I have not the time I need to show you all there is to see. The humanity that surrounds you every day. The souls that cry out for your help. Your family. Your very blood that you deny. Yet I die even as I speak. Our spirit lies so short. My life upon this globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight? Scrooge. Remember all you have seen. Remember the poor and the children and the orphan. <laughs> Remember the orphan. Have they no refuge, no, no resource besides myself? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? You are about to show me things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that not true, spirit? Spirit of the future. I fear you more than any that I have yet seen. But as I know your purpose is, is to do me good, and I hope to live to be another man from what I was, <laughs> I am prepared to bear you company and to do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? No, no word for me then. Have, have you something to show me? Lead on, Spirit. Guilty if the flow was nicer. Nah, maybe if the nut 
went so cracked But instead he was a wicked old prune, yeah And so I'm getting my bag
he called the little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. No, darling, it's, it's my weak eyes. It's, this color hurts them. It's, oh. oh, I wouldn't want to show weak eyes to your father when he comes home. And it, when is he coming home? It must be near his time. That's it, rather. He's been walking a bit slower these last few days. And yet I remember he used to walk really fast with Tiny Tim on his shoulders. I remember that. So have I. And so have I. But he was, he was so light and your father loved him. Loved him so that it was no trouble. It was no trouble at all. Oh. Here comes your father now, okay. So you went there today? Yeah. It would have done you good to see how green the little hill was. But I told him we'd come back on Sunday. All of us. I miss him so much. I ran into Mr. Scrooge's nephew on the street today. He's such a kind man, considering we don't know each other very well. He asked me how we were doing, and I, I told him of our situation. He said he was heartily sorry for me, and heartily sorry for my good wife. And how he knew that, I don't know. Knew what, my dear? Well, that you're a good wife. Well, everybody knows that. <laughs> Well observed. Well observed. one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be, or are they the shadows of things that may be only? Men's courses foreshadow certain ends to which, if persevered in, they must lead. But if those courses be departed from, the ends can change. Say it is what thus with what ye show me. I was, but why show me all this? 
if I am past all hope. Good spirit, assure me that I may yet change the shadows you have shown me by an altered life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I know that my meager works cannot save my wretched soul for that, as Mr. Marley observed, comes from another ministry. But I give my life to God now and hope to make up for time lost. The spirit of Christmas will strive within me. I will not shut out the lesson that I have learned. The shadows of the future you have shown me can be washed away and new life my life can change spirit, spirit, <laughs> spirit, spirit. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Is it true? Have I really seen the way things are and were? Am I sure? Much is happening, it seems like a blur. But I don't care. The sunlight's glistening in the frosty air. I've been spared from a physical force of darkness and despair. As giddy as a schoolboy, regardless of the weather, I am bound to joy. The old way of life is over, a new way of life will start. I've had a transformation since the Lord of heaven is living in my heart. Regardless of the weather, I have found joy. The old way of life is over. A new way of life will start. I've had a transformation since the Lord of heaven is living in my I'm as merry as an angel. Oh, look. My sheets. My bed curtains. My room. I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't know how long I've been with the spirits. Oh, I don't know anything. Never mind. Just look at this morning. Oh, you there, boy. What day is it? What? I say, my fine fellow, what day is it? Today, why, it's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. Oh, I haven't missed it. The spirits, they did it all in one night. Well, they can do anything they like. Of course they can. Listen, my fine fellow. Yes? Do you know the poultries on the next street over, uh, at the corner? I should hope I do. Oh, what an intelligent boy. Remarkable boy. <laughs> do you know whether they have sold the prize turkey that was hanging in the window there? Uh, uh, the, not the little prize turkey, the big one? The one as big as me? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What a delightful child. It's a pleasure to talk to you. And that's the one, yes. It's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it. Oh, sure we will. <laughs> no, 
no, no, no, no, I am in earnest. Go and buy it and bring it back here so that I may show you where to take it. Come back with the turkey. I'll give you a shilling. Come back with the turkey in less than five minutes. I'll give you each half a crown. <laughs> Oh, look at them go. <laughs> oh, I'll take it to the crowd. God bless them. I will change. I have changed. And I will not return to the gloom that once surrounded my entire being. That gloom and darkness shall become to me what this most holy of days once was. So that when others catch me laughing, I have the slightest pause and ask, whatever happened to the old Ebenezer Scrooge? I shall turn with a wink and say, the old Ebenezer Scrooge? I don't believe in him. He doesn't exist. The old Ebenezer, Bob. Humbug! Mr. Scrooge, whatever are you doing here? Who is it, dear? It's Mr. Scrooge, dear. What? What is he doing here? I don't know. Mr. Scrooge, how can I help you? Mr. Cratchit, what are you doing here at this time of the day? You should be in the office working by now. Mr. Scrooge, it's Christmas Day. You gave me the day off. The what? The day off? In the middle of the week? Well, that's unheard of. And that's why I'm here to... Listen here, Mr. Scrooge. Today is Christmas, and it is a day for family, for peace, and in goodwill, and baby Jesus. And if you think for one second that you are going to take give my husband you and... the rest of the week off? What? With pay? <gasps> Starting Monday, when you return to the office, your salary will be doubled. What? What? Now then, my fine assistants here have brought with them my Christmas present to you. And I do hope that your family can enjoy it. Well, I want a turkey. Yes, it is, my dear lad. That turkey should keep you well fed for quite some time. And God... Bless you, Tiny Tim. God bless us, everyone! And, all right then, I have many other places to visit this morning. Uh, Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mrs. Cratchit. Merry Christmas. I'll be seeing you on Monday morning, and not a, not a day earlier, understand? Thank you, Mr. Scrooge, and Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Many back 
demons included in there as well. A Merry Christmas to you today. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Merry Christmas indeed. Why, Uncle Ebenezer, how good of you to come. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Merry Christmas, Fred. I hope that you can forgive this stubborn old man for missing so much time with, with family. There's no need to forgive you, Uncle. I'm so delighted to have you at my home this Christmas. This will truly be a blessed Christmas. Oh, Uncle Ebenezer, I don't believe you've met my wife, Abigail. How do you do, Mr. Scrooge? Um, I feel as though I already know you, because I've heard so much about you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I, I can imagine what you have heard. Uh, my dear Abigail, it is a pleasure to finally meet you. It's been far too long in coming. And uh, try not to believe everything you hear about me. You know, sometimes even a leopard might change his spots <laughs> and make it Uncle Ebenezer, please. Uncle Ebenezer it is. Welcome to our home, Uncle, and Merry Christmas. Scrooge did it all and infinitely more. By the grace of God, his life was changed. To Tiny Tim, who did not die, he became a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a Christian, as good a man as any city had ever known. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh. At church frequently, his own heart laughed and danced. And that was quite enough for him. Thereafter, it was always said of Mr. Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive had the knowledge. May that truly be said of us, of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone! <laughs> Sunset. I think there is another person that should be honored. That's right.